They say the eyes are the windows to the soul. That may be true, but I can confidently say the eyes are the windows to the body. Here are eight signs and symptoms that warn us of something truly dangerous going on inside the body. Don't miss these. It may just save your life. The first dangerous warning sign is a temporary blackout of vision. We call this amaurosis fugax, which literally translates to fleeting darkening. Amaurosis fugax describes temporary episodes of sudden painless loss of vision that usually returns after a few seconds and vision will often return to normal. Now, just because vision returns back to normal and it's over with doesn't mean you should just forget about it and move on. Amaurosis fugax, while it has many underlying conditions, some of them are incredibly serious, which would include carotid artery disease or embolism. In this condition, there is a sudden blockage of blood flow to the eye, and that is why the vision goes black. The blood flow then returns, and the vision returns as well. But if this were to happen for a longer period, there would be tissue necrosis or death, and the vision wouldn't return. So this is a warning sign that there could be loss of vision that remains permanent in the near future. It can also warn you that there may be a heart attack or stroke coming, something related to vascular disease. Because if there can be a blockage of blood flow to the eye, there can be a blockage of blood flow within the heart or to the brain. And we know that means heart attack or stroke. Clearly, these are life-threatening conditions, so you do not want to ignore when the vision goes black. Symptoms of amaurosis fugax can sometimes be confused with migraines because migraines can also cause abnormal visual phenomena, but there are some ways to differentiate them, and if you're not sure, you really should see your doctor either way. Symptoms of migraine are more likely to include flashing lights or zigzag patterns, and they usually last for around 20 minutes or so. They are often accompanied by a headache or a headache that follows the symptoms, but that is not always the case. Amaurosis fugax, on the other hand, tends to be quick, lasting only a few seconds, and then it will return with no other real symptoms involved. And then you also have the medical history to keep in mind. Are there other factors that could lead to this, like obesity, a known cardiovascular disease, a history of cardiovascular disease in the family. These are all things to consider, and these are all things your doctor will want to know and look over. A short temporary blackout of vision warrants an immediate evaluation, usually in the emergency room rather than the eye doctor. Even though the symptoms were in the eye, it could point to an emergent situation that could happen within minutes or even within a year or so. Another symptom to look out for is eye pain. And eye pain can mean a lot of different things, but in this case today, we are talking about eye pain that can point to something really big and dangerous going on inside the body. And this eye pain could be accompanied by temporary loss of vision or even permanent loss of vision. But the point is that we want to diagnose what's going on before it gets to that point. Giant cell arteritis is a condition where the medium and large size arteries are inflamed. And in this particular case, we're focusing on the temporal artery, which leads to the eye, and that's why there's eye pain. Other symptoms that are associated with this are also scalp tenderness, headache, jaw pain that is so severe that people start losing weight because they don't want to eat, also blurry vision or double vision. Giant cell arteritis can be diagnosed based on symptoms as well as blood tests and biopsies. The important thing is to diagnose it before something really severe happens, like permanent loss of vision. In really severe cases, it can even lead to aortic aneurysm, aortic dissection, or stroke. So if you have eye pain and you don't know why, be sure to see an eye doctor right away. If you're learning something new here, be sure to like and subscribe and share this video with others. The more engagement this video gets, the more people get to learn about what could be ahead so they're prepared if this situation happens to them. Now on to the next one. Another sign to look out for is asymmetric pupils. Now there are some things that are concerning and some things that are not when it comes to pupil asymmetry. So I'm going to break those down a little bit today. Horner syndrome is a little bit of both. If you were born with Horner syndrome, it means the sympathetic nervous system didn't develop properly on the affected side and that isn't as dangerous as it occurring, let's say, later in life, when this can actually point to 
trauma, which you would obviously know if that occurred, or stroke or a tumor. What happens in Horner's syndrome is the sympathetic nervous system is affected on one side, making the pupil unable to dilate and causing the eyelid to droop, and also anhydrosis, meaning no sweating on that same affected side. This is going to be most noticeable in darker conditions where the eyes should be dilating, but the affected side will remain small. If you develop pupil asymmetry suddenly, it could point to something serious, so you should call your doctor right away. Another condition that will cause asymmetric pupils is an oculomotor nerve palsy, the third cranial nerve. This nerve is responsible for constricting the pupil as well as many of the muscles that move the eye. So in an oculomotor nerve palsy, the pupil is going to remain dilated on the affected side and the muscles are not going to move in a few particular directions. And that will cause the eye to have a natural position now that is in the down and out position. This will cause double vision, which may lead people to hold their heads in certain positions or only look in certain directions in order to reduce that double vision. An oculomotor nerve palsy can be caused by diabetes, which in that case, most people will probably already know that they have diabetes, but it can also be caused by more serious things like brain aneurysms or tumors. Asymmetric pupils along with redness and eye pain or light sensitivity are likely caused by uveitis, which is inflammation in the eye, including the iris. When the eye is inflamed for a long period of time, the iris becomes sticky and it actually sticks to the lens behind it. Now the iris is stuck. It can't constrict and dilate the way that it is supposed to. And this can lead to really serious complications because it blocks the flow of fluid through the eye and can lead the eye pressure to spike, causing a glaucoma attack. Ocular inflammation is likely to occur in those who have a history of autoimmune diseases, but also it can occur out of the blue. So if you're having eye pain, you should see your doctor right away. If it's already to the point where the pupils are asymmetric, that inflammation has probably been going on for quite a while. So do not ignore eye pain, redness, or light sensitivity. Pupil asymmetry can also occur temporarily along with migraines, and there's also a condition called Aedes tonic pupil, where the pupil in the affected eye remains dilated in the presence of light, but still constricts when focusing on near objects. Though in late stages, the pupil may actually become smaller than the unaffected eye. The cause is usually benign, but viral infections and other neurological issues may also cause it. So if it's new, it's best to check it out. You could also be like me and have physiologic anisocoria, which means that the pupils are very slightly different sizes, but the difference remains the same whether it's light or dark. So in dark conditions, the difference between the pupil size is one millimeter, and in light conditions, they're smaller, but the difference between the two is still one millimeter. A good rule of thumb is if you're noticing a sudden difference in your pupil size and you don't know why or you haven't noticed this before, be sure to see your eye doctor right away, especially if it's accompanied by other things like drooping eyelid or double vision. More on double vision next. We were just talking about the third cranial nerve, but also the fourth and sixth cranial nerves are responsible for the eye muscles and eye movement. If you have a sudden double vision or misalignment of the eyes, it could point to an issue with any of those three nerves. There are more common underlying causes like diabetes or hypertension, but these can also point to serious things going on like brain aneurysms, tumors, or stroke. If you're having sudden double vision, it's really important to see an eye doctor to differentiate what the cause is because the treatments are going to be very different and some may warrant urgent evaluations and treatments. Other possible causes of double vision could include multiple sclerosis or thyroid eye disease, but more on thyroid eye disease in a little bit. It is possible to be born with a nerve palsy or to develop an eye turn called strabismus early on in life. So if you've had double vision, especially without your glasses, for a long period of time and you already know the diagnosis, chances are that's all it is. But if this is a new finding or if you have any concerns, don't hesitate to call your eye doctor because you may need urgent or emergent treatment. A golden brown or greenish yellow ring around the iris is called a Kaiser Fleischer ring. It looks like the iris is changing color, but it's actually due to deposition of copper in the cornea above the iris. This ring is pathognomonic for a condition called Wilson's disease, which means if you see this sign, you know it's Wilson's disease. And Wilson's can be a little bit difficult to diagnose because it has a lot of symptoms that are similar to other conditions, but a simple look in the eye will tell you that it is in fact Wilson's disease, which is a rare genetic condition in which the body is not able to properly excrete copper. So copper builds up in various organs, causing their damage. 
Unfortunately, once this condition is diagnosed, it can be managed by changes in diet and certain medications that help the body to excrete copper or reduce its ability to absorb it. Jaundice occurs when bilirubin builds up in the body. Bilirubin is produced when red blood cells break down and the liver is responsible for getting rid of bilirubin. So if there's jaundice, it usually indicates that there's something going on in the liver, though this can also happen in pancreatitis, malaria, and gallstones. The eyes are the first and easiest place to spot jaundice. It can happen suddenly or very gradually. So if you notice any change in the coloration of the white part of the eye, don't ignore it. Did you know that the pathway from your retinas to the visual cortex is so carefully mapped that if there's an area of your visual field that's affected, we can spot which part of the brain is affected? There's one particular condition that causes bilateral temporal visual field loss, and that would be in pituitary adenomas. These pituitary tumors correspond to the part of the brain that is responsible for that temporal vision in each eye. So we don't just test your visual field to look for eye diseases like glaucoma. We also test it to see if there could be a tumor in the brain. At comprehensive eye exams, we'll test your visual field in various ways, whether that's using our fingers or a test that looks like this, and then if we see something unusual, we can do further testing that gives us much more detailed results using an instrument that looks like this. This is one of the ways that we can spot which areas of the brain was affected by a stroke, for example, but we can also pinpoint what area of the brain may be affected by a tumor, let's say. Proptosis or a bulging forward of the eyes can point to a few underlying health conditions that are pretty serious. Probably the most well-known is Graves' disease or hyperthyroidism, though other types of thyroid disease can also cause proptosis, though not as common. In Graves' disease, the extraocular muscles actually thicken, and this is what causes the eyes to bulge forward. You can imagine how this would cause problems with mobility of the eyes that could lead to double vision due to their misalignment. It also makes it more difficult to close the eyes, and that can lead to non-healing corneal ulcers due to exposure to the elements. Proptosis can also be caused by other serious conditions, like a brain tumor. And in this case, you'll usually see proptosis of just one eye, compared to the thyroid eye disease, which is usually going to affect both, though sometimes in an asymmetric way. But if there's a tumor in one side of the brain, especially near the orbit, think about it this way. It's going to want to push towards the area of least resistance. And your brain is surrounded by your hard skull, but this orbit has much softer tissue you in it. So it's going to push forward on that orbit, causing the eye to bulge outward. So if you're noticing bulging eyes or asymmetric appearance of the eyes, don't ignore it. Something that is much more rare would be proptosis with a markedly red eye. And this can occur in a carotid cavernous fistula. Now, before we get too deep into that, what you need to understand is the way the blood flows through the body. In the arteries, as the blood leaves the heart, these are strong blood vessels with thick muscular walls to handle that pressure of the blood being pushed directly from the heart. Then by the time the blood reaches your body and heads back to the heart, it goes through the veins, which have much thinner walls. This is a low pressure system compared to the high pressure system of the arteries. There is this area in our heads called the cavernous sinus. A sinus in the vascular system is essentially a contained pool of blood. The carotid artery actually passes through the cavernous sinus. When I first learned that this part of the body actually exists, my mind was totally blown and I could barely believe it. It just seems like such a bad design to have the carotid artery, a really high pressure blood system going through the cavernous sinus. And in the case of a carotid cavernous fistula, that means there is an opening in the carotid artery. That means there's blood that can go from that high pressure system in the carotid artery into the cavernous sinus. This causes the blood to back up into the veins of the eyes, causing it to become extremely red and bulge forward. You can even see the eye pulsing along with the heartbeat. This is a very serious condition that needs to be checked and taken care of immediately. There are certainly other eye signs and symptoms that point to other stuff going on in the body, but these are some of the most serious. If you're ever in question or feel like something could be wrong, don't ever hesitate to call your eye doctor. It's always better to be safe than sorry and to catch something sooner rather than later. Be sure to like and subscribe if you learned something and share this video with a friend. You might just end up saving their vision or even their life. For more eye health videos like this one, check out this video here or this playlist here. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.